Good morning. It's good to see each and every one of you this morning on All Saints Day. Thanks, Joanne, for your guitar and song singing there. That was lovely. We appreciate you doing that for us. Um, we want to remember those that are not with us today because of either illness or travel or, or whatever um, other obligations they may have, and we hope that everyone will be back next Sunday. We want to thank Diana for bringing in the light this morning also. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with our call to worship that's in our bulletins. Almighty God, you call witnesses from every nation and reveal your glory in their lives. Make us thankful for you, their example. On this day, strengthen us by their fellowship. May we be faithful like them in the service of your kingdom. Our opening prayer is also in our bulletin, and we will say that in unison. Faithful Redeemer, you are the beginning and ending of all things. You promise to wipe away every tear, that death and mourning will be no more. You make your home among us and abide with us as our God. Teach us to live as the saints you call us to be, that we may truly be your people, living and doing your will. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. At this time, Liz will come up and help us with the thought for the day in the Old Testament reading. Oh, thank you, Frida. Our thought for the day comes from um, uh, James Moore. He is so inspirational. And uh, he was talking about friendship and Christian friendship and how important it is. And he was telling the story. Uh, uh, he met this gentleman, uh, Kent, when they worked together uh, at St. Luke's United Methodist Church in Houston. And he was the minister to youth, and uh, Kent was the minister to single adults. And he was just an outgoing, personable type person. He come into the room and he changed the atmosphere of the whole room. He had energy. And uh, he was just uh, uh, an easy person to be around. And their offices were side by side. And they spent entirely too much time, and now he's admitting this, doing things perhaps unrelated to ministry in either of our fields. We laughed a lot. We hung out. Um, they tested a youth game in the hallway of the church offices, one in which you put pantyhose on your head with a tennis ball in the foot, and you're trying to swing it around and hit your opponent without getting hit in the head. And of course, when you're doing something like that, laughing hysterically, the senior minister and the delegate of bishops came walking by. So it, it, there's nothing wrong with having a good time with your friends and church people. And uh, they turned out they both ended up with their own churches uh, doing great work. And despite getting caught with pantyhose on your head, and, uh, tennis balls, it does work out. Our reading today comes from Isaiah, 25th chapter, verses 6 through 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make up for all people a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. He will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all people, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. 
This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Good morning. I've been in a bit of a rush this week. <laughs> Didn't get back till fairly late last night from Indiana. So, uh, so how are you today? Well. All right. It's good to see all of you. It's good to see the the front pew. Uh, if you could get a couple more, we could fill this whole front pew here. I think <laughs> so. So it's good to see all of you here today. Uh, Buffalo Bills fan, my son-in-law would would uh, make you his new friend. <laughs> so, okay, yeah, my son-in-law is a Buffalo Bills fan. He uh, practically every piece of clothing that he owns uh, has uh, Buffalo Bills on it. He, Every time they play, he goes to a sports bar in Richmond and sits with his friends. So, uh, anyway. But yeah, it's good to see all of you here today. Uh, this is All Saints Sunday. It's a day that we remember uh, the saints in our lives that have gone on before us and especially remember the saints of the churches of the parish today. So... Anyway, I don't know about you, but to me, each one of you looks different. Do you think you each look different? Yeah. Yeah? Why do you think that is? Because we're not the same. You're not the same, yeah. I like that. I think, I think God creates us each to be pretty unique. Right? We, I mean, not only in how we look, also in our mannerisms. Um, there's supposed to be about 7 billion people on this planet. And they say everybody has a twin. But even though you look alike, you mean you're probably not alike, right? Now, I think it goes beyond that. Because I was in a plane this week, I, f I flew out to Indiana to visit my brother. It is flat as a pancake in Indiana. I mean, there isn't anything you could even call a hill in Indiana. And uh, from the plane, it's just flat. It's got, looks like there's all these little squares lined out where the farms are. My brother says they raise corn and soybeans. Uh, it doesn't look like that around here, does it? Yeah, we got we got mountains. It didn't take me long to you know feel out of place. So why do you think God does that? Because God made it different. Makes it different. Yeah. So maybe God makes Indiana different because we rely on what God, in the way God created Indiana, to help provide food for us, right? Yeah. And around here, God just gave us beautiful mountains and trees to look at. <laughs> so it seems like, and think about this, maybe God creates each of us different, but God creates different spaces on this globe that we call the earth that we live on uh, for certain things. And, and maybe God also has in mind the combination of us being distributed through those places for some reason. We don't really understand what God has us do sometimes. But we, we, I think we, we can agree that we're all different don't forget that we're all special, too. And every square inch of this planet is special because God created it. When God created it, God said, this is good. And when God created humans, God said, this was very good. Okay? So maybe the differences that you encounter in life, just think about it. Maybe 
Why did God do this? God must have some purpose in making this thing different. Sound okay? All right, you're my new best friends. <laughs> Let's say a prayer for our youth here today. Eternal God, we give you thanks for uh, the, the gift of youth and their, their minds who, who uh, are just open to, to understanding uh, you and understanding what you have done in this world and with each of us. And, and we pray that uh, they will always have you in their heart and, and remember in their travels uh, as they experience new and exciting sights uh, that this was part of your creation and that uh, there is purpose in it. We ask this in your name. Amen. And I'm about to forget where, where we are right now. Uh, I give thanks to our internet uh, worshipers who are joining us here for the uh, month of November at Batesville. And uh, our prayer is that uh, you will be blessed uh, and in this time that you spend with us. So just remember there's more people in the back pews than you know. <laughs> <laughs> So we're looking at page one, uh, Remembrance of Those Who Have Gone Before Us. Uh, would you join me in a responsive reading? We remember, O oh God, the countless saints of history who have blazed the trail of courage through time. We remember, O oh God, the tender touch of loved ones, the example of heroes, the healing words of comforters, the remarkable acts of fearless ones. We remember, O oh God, the gentle strength of grandmothers, the loyalty of friends, the kindness of strangers, the joy of children, the sacrifice of parents. We remember, O oh God, the supreme love of Jesus, the blessing of the Spirit, the reminder of his words, the sharing of his suffering, the glory of his resurrection, shown forth in the lives of his disciples, Young and old, dead and living, articulate and silent, strange and familiar, brilliant and ordinary. We remember in every time and place the saints of God who have shown us the Lord. Today we lift up the names of the saints of our local churches who have claimed God's promise of the resurrection in this past year and have gone on before us. Richard Hudson of Batesville Church. I invite you to lift up and share the names of your own saints who have passed this most recent year. Jill's granddaughter. Mo Morales, good friend. Avis, a co-worker. Paul Miller, classmate of mine. We light a candle in remembrance of those names. Let us pray together. We bless your holy name, O God, for all your saints who have finished their course now rest from their labors. 
Give us grace to follow the example of their steadfastness and faithfulness to your honor and glory. Through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Our second lesson this morning is from the book of Revelation, and I'll be reading from Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 6. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. And then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for your presence here. Your presence as you walk up and down our aisles, step in and out of the pews, as you sit down beside us on this day of worship. We give you thanks for your words that you have given us today. We ask this in your name. Amen. As a pastor, I have read those words from Revelation probably more times than I want to try to recount. I read it uh, at times in a sanctuary. At other times, I read those words in a chapel of a funeral home. In the days and the years following the pandemic, most often I read it graveside as uh, a family uh, put to rest uh, a loved one that had passed on. A loved one, a dear friend, and they gathered to honor them. Funerals come at a time of grief, grief in recognizing our human loss, the loss of someone who has been very dear to us but All Saints Sunday is not a funeral. The funeral is behind us, and on this day we gather to celebrate and to, to honor and remember the lives of those who have gone on before us, the saints of our lives, the saints of the church. We gather to celebrate and enjoy that their journey is now complete, that they have been perfected, that they know God as God truly is. Now in, the, in Revelation, we find a lot of mysterious narratives in there. And, and uh, you, you've heard me say this before, that I believe the Apostle John did the best he could with the vocabulary he had to work with. But he was using an earthly vocabulary to try to describe divine things that God, Jesus was revealing to him in his visions. So are the streets of heaven paved with gold? Are there pearly gates? 
I'm not sure who came up with the idea that Peter would be standing there next to those pearly gates. Is that the way we see heaven? Well, maybe it is like that. We can't dispute that. But I think that glory is wrapped more in a few words of the scripture from Revelation that I just read. All things created new. All things created new. And if you've been around me for a while, you know that I'm suggesting that the all things created new is a return to the perfection of the Garden of Eden. So in my theology, heaven looks more like the Garden of Eden than streets that are paved with gold. It's a return to the perfection that God uh, intended in the creation when God put man and, and woman there in the garden. Today, as we honor those saints who have passed on, I think that we're most reminded that God's time isn't confined within the limits of linear time the way we are. That God is the beginning, the end, and everything in between, all at the same time, all at the same time. And so today, I think we can rejoice with the names of those saints that uh, you have lifted up, uh, saints whose lives still shine in our hearts. They dwell, and they now dwell in that uh, perfect timelessness with God. Today, we rejoice in the gift of having had their lives intersect with our own for however brief a time. Uh, the, 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 the ministry, the, the, friend, the uh, friendliness, the relationships that we have with these people that we recognize as saints in our own lives because they influenced our lives. And whatever time we spent with them, they helped make us what we are here today. So today we give thanks to God for those saints that God placed in our lives. And to God be the glory. Amen. So as you continue with your Sabbath practices this afternoon, you know, it talks about this is a day of remembrance. Maybe you can spend some time remembering the saints of your own lives and uh, what, what, a, what a difference they made in your lives, what uh, inspiration they were. Because, you know, as long as we keep the remembrances in our hearts and minds, they're not really gone. So here are these words of benediction. Gracious God, we go forth today with the memory of the saints that you placed in our lives. Let us go forth in the faithfulness of sharing their joy and their time with us. And we share it in, with others as the hands and feet of Christ in this world. We ask this in your name. Amen. in peace.